and the desire to option the film rights, which they always do first before they actually purchase them. Uh, because the process is they option the film rights, then they will commission a screenplay. If they like the screenplay, then they'll go to the next step of development, and at some point they will buy the film rights, which is a very big payday for an author. Um, or ordinarily much more money than they make from selling the book. Um, but it's filled with uh, trepidation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Lois has experience too. Yes, Lo 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 Lois, yes. So, so Lois knows about this, but um, the outcomes can be so varied. And, and it seems to me that if you look at the range of outcomes of, of your book being turned into a film, uh, there's really great outcomes that constitute maybe like uh, one tenth of one percent of the efforts and then it rapidly descends and, and, and the likelihood of a bad outcome seems much higher. So you have to contend with that and you can and you can delude yourself into thinking that if I can participate in the process I can protect my work and I can I can direct it into a, 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 a film story that, that honors my book story and I'll, I'll be happy and it will be the next Wizard of Oz and people will be watching it for uh, generations. Or you can so, remember that William Faulkner thought the same thing. Right? <laughs> right. So, 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 so there is there there is a, a, a kind of a um, you know a deal with the devil there because um, I, I I've had three books turned into films and I don't feel like I was exploited or abused on any of those occasions. I felt that the the filmmakers were trying to make good entertainment. They were invariably well. Uh, um, funded efforts, the, you know, the budgets were quite large and I, I didn't feel that it was an example of a studio simply taking a familiar name and, and then trying to make a quick buck the first two weekends on a stinker and then, and then run away and, and count the profit. So um, I would do it again partly because um, I don't think the three uh, that were done so far uh, were as good as they could have been. They weren't the films I would have made, uh, but I I'd like another shot and, uh, um, you know, maybe uh, have something that actually did turn out to be closer to the thing I imagined uh, it could be. I think we have time for one more. One more question. Yes, right in front. Yeah, when you talk about that, I always think of Jumanji as an example of that because I love your book and then you see the movie and you're like, what does one have to do with the other? How did you feel about the oh, movie? Oh, she didn't like Jumanji either. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jumanji the movie. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, you know, the reality is that, that when a studio likes the concept, the premise of a book, which only takes 16 pages of text to tell and, and, and a bunch of pictures, and they have to create a 100-minute feature film, uh, great damage will be done. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so it was in the case of that. And, and I remember with, with, with Polar Express, when I was sitting down with the people involved in making it, Tom Hanks and Robert Zemeckis, and um, I actually had some ideas about expanding the story, which had to do with the backstory of the conductor. Where did he come from? Because he's not part of the traditional Christmas mythology. And I said, maybe we could explore that. And they said, well, there's nothing like that in the book. <laughs> and I said, well, I, I know, but the book, we, we just want to make the book. The book's the, book's the thing. And I said, well, that's great, but you want to make more than a 12-minute movie, I think. <laughs> and uh, they said, well, no, we, well, we do, yes, but we think all the material is there. And I, I, I don't believe that to this day. I think that they basically took a balloon and puffed it up. Uh, um, so, <clears throat> Yes, you're right. Uh, in, in such a, a small little book that has to have so much added onto it, usually in a, in a longer book, a, a, a novel, the challenge for the filmmakers is to uh, uh, cut things away without doing damage to the uh, uh, to the intentions of the author. But in, in my case, each time it's been, what can we add on and try to maintain, you know, the, the, the feeling of the book? And it's it's probably harder to add stuff on and do that than to take stuff away. So books can be wrecked in many ways. That's, we'll just end on that uplifting note. <laughs> and so we, we apparently got...